Welcome to a brand new edition of It's All Relative. I'm Josh. I'm Sarah. And today we're joined by a returning guest who's helping us talk about a certain unreleased movie that seems to be causing much controversy. You'll hear some facts, our input, and opinions about this matter. So you guys already know what to do. Turn it up and let's get it rolling with an all-new episode right here on the It's All Relative podcast. So what's up, Sarah? Not too much. Same old, same old. Trying to adapt to the chilly weather that has uh, violently fucking come upon us. Yes, fall has arrived. Um, Aggressively. She made her presence known. Yeah. And I love the fall time, but like, shit. Mm-hmm. Got cold super shit, quick. real quick. Not even like usually like in New York, we have like that fake fall, fake winter vibes, and then we get a whole week of just straight hot weather, and we didn't get that. You know, it's October now, so I don't think we're getting it. Yeah. I think it's it's cold it's cold until after January at this point, unfortunately enough. Yeah. Probably well, after February. I don't fucking know, whatever New York decides to do. <laughs> yeah, she's crazy. Or, <laughs> yeah. or New York's crazy. But. Yeah, don't assume gender now, Josh. Yeah, you're gonna get, I you're get in trouble. Easy. <laughs> but um yeah, fall has <laughs> arrived. Um with fall comes football. Yeah, yeah. Uh, are you a fan of football? So growing up, like I always loved going to the Super Bowl parties and shit like that. I never followed it super closely. And I think that's kind of my thing with a lot of sports, but like football included. I like watching the games. I like the camaraderie about it. You know, I respect um, all of the, um, what do you call it? The bets you place on football and shit. I can't even remember what the uh, fantasy football, mm-hmm. all mm-hmm. the fantasy football league shit like that. Like, I think it's very cool. I never really got into it. Mm-hmm. Um, my boyfriend, on the other hand, loves football, watches it, used to play it, is all over it. So this season, I've been watching it okay. a little bit. Favorite team? I was raised a Giants fan, and I don't have any facts or anything that I can put behind it to support it. But like I said, I've never been in it, so I just always say I was raised as a Giants fan. So that's usually my team. No, right on. I'm a, I'm a Giants fan, too. Yeah, man. And if I'm, like, watching a game and, like, the Giants aren't there, I just kind of pick a team. I'm like, all right, well, you know, maybe go for the underdog, maybe go for whoever's playing better. But, yeah, like I said, I don't have any, like, facts or statistics to support any opinions about pretty much any sports team. Right so on. I'm just, you know, Giants fan. I'm willing to admit that. Nice. <laughs> but football, fall, you know, you got to love it. Absolutely. Um, Quickly, I, I think we should just uh, quickly send some uh, positive vibes, whatever, yep. down to uh, down south. everyone in Florida from uh, Hurricane Ian. At, did you see any... Um, videos or anything from Oh, the, yeah. 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 Even this morning, I was scrolling through TikTok, and this woman was walking through her house just showing all the damage. She must have been right in the eye of it because on the walls, you can see, like, how high the water went up, and it was at least two or three feet of water. She's got clothes soaked, furniture, and at the end of the video, she goes, everyone's been asking how they can help, and she put her Venmo down there because her insurance company isn't covering any of it. Shit. Her whole house. Like, the walls, you could see they were so soaked mm-hmm. and just deteriorated from that day or two of storms that it's I'd be surprised if that house is still structurally sound to be honest just from how the water just logged it you know water people underestimate the power of water no right water damage is the absolute worst water and fire disgusting and and it just fucking destroys so much shit like your life is floating away down your fucking street like that's absolutely insane so yeah no definitely big positive vibes and prayers to anyone affected by that shit yeah people that losing their houses i know that there's like thousands of people without power every everything and i mean farms with their farm animals livestock fencing animals in general okay listen love people people are great ish (laughs) <laughs> I could really get into that if I wanted to. But animals, yeah. however, I'm sorry. I will probably save the drowning dog before I try to help a human. <laughs> <laughs> so as fucked as that sounds. But, you know, yeah. Right on. It's definitely yeah, fucking but, Mother Nature. Yeah. But um, like we said, you know, thoughts and prayers, positive yeah. vibes to everyone down there. Yeah. But um, let's move on real quick to uh, Sarah's fact of the week. Yeah. I want to do it a little different real quick. What I'm going to do is, uh, excuse me, I'm just going to ask a few questions, okay. right? No explanation, mm-hmm. just an answer, okay? Fair N- enough. Nice and quick. So uh, let's let's run down this list. God, I feel like I'm on a trivia show now. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Ocean or mountains? Fuck. <laughs> that was not <laughs> one of the choices. Um, 
um, um, um, um. Uh, that's a really, really hard one for me. We'll say mountains. Okay. Pepsi or Coke? Coke. Apple or Droid? Apple. Snickers or Milky Way? In a perfect world, neither, but we'll say Snickers because it's catchy. Okay. And uh, last one real quick. Uh, do you like candy corn? No. No? No, I have no. a strong hatred towards candy corn, and I've been called psychotic for it a few times in the past few weeks, so it's funny that you just asked that. Yeah, it's weird how um, there are so many people who are split with that. Like, people either like it or hate it. Or absolutely hate it. And yeah. I'm one of the people that absolutely hates it and will get into a full blown argument with someone about it if I need to. Really? You're chewing stale confectioner sugar, is essentially what fucking candy corn is. That shit's good. <laughs> I have I such the... beef with you right now, Josh. <laughs> I know. I'm not like a huge, huge fan of it, right? Right. But like, I don't, I can eat it. Like, I don't dislike it. I don't like all the. the um, pumpkins and the other Bro, uh, that's the same like shit that. in different colors. It's, it's too shape. sweet. It, that that shit was too sweet. But the candy corns, like, yeah, I can fuck with it. Those candy pumpkins and everything else you too just sweet. mentioned. Too sweet. Bro, they're literally candy corn in different color and shit. It's like meatloaf versus a burger versus a fucking meatball. Same shit, different shape. Nah, I don't like meatloaf. Nah, but see I that's like in burgers your See, there I we like... go. See, that's in your head right there. <laughs> <laughs> That is all oh. men's law. Your mind is a very powerful thing, listeners. All right, <laughs> keep that in mind. All right, but um, you uh, you want to get our guest on? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> our guest today is someone who's been on the show Fucking before. Candy corn. When we covered a previous social issue, and uh, the message that we had had was so purposeful and moving that we had to have her back, making her return to it's all relative, ladies and gentlemen, Lutina Davis. Hi guys! Hey, welcome back. Thanks, thanks for asking me to come back. Absolutely. Uh, how have you been since the last time we've seen you? Good. You know, it's just been a couple months, and you know, I have a nine-year-old, so getting school started and things like that. Mm-hmm. So it's just been steady getting back on a schedule, as opposed to the freedom of summer. Because I'm pretty I was sure about that's to say, the was last he time. was he online for during COVID and stuff like that too? Uh, not this last year, but okay. yeah, the years previously. This mm-hmm. was his first actual legitimate school year in school, all uh-huh. from start to finish. How's awesome. he doing? He's doing good. good. I mean, he just made a transition to a different school, so he's doing much better, and it seems like a good start. Shout out Latina son. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out for sure. So that's it. You know, he keeps me busy. But mm. other than that, nice. Um, for those of you who haven't listened or uh, are familiar with Lutina, she was previously on. She was on episode 40, uh, Abortions, Adoptions, and Choices. And if you haven't listened to that episode, I strongly urge you to. It was That's a really good episode. Yes, it was one of the most uh, powerful episodes that uh, in the show's history. So if you haven't listened to it, um, I'd advise you to. Yes, go check that out. That um, I actually That one stands out in my mind, too. Yeah, but um, let's get into today's content, okay? The world's been talking, and we've listened, and I don't know if it's a good thing or bad thing, uh, or if it just shows, you know, the state of the world that we're in, but uh, people got beef with a Disney movie currently, mm-hmm. okay? Um, this movie hasn't even been released yet but is set to be dropped on May 26, 2023. All right, a trailer of an iconic scene was released, and from that, it got people talking. All right, so talk to me. Uh, What are some of the things that you both have heard or read about this issue? Um, I've seen a lot of little girls be very happy and react so amazingly shocked and proud to see them being represented on the screen. You know, many, many little girls saw that. And, Mm -hmm. you know, from the hair type to, you know, just the way she looked, people resonated with that. And I saw them be very, very happy. And I hope, you know, I have two nieces, and I hope that they can see that too and also be, like, grateful to Mm -hmm. have representation on the, the, the big screen. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, it's great. Yeah. I agree with that. I've also seen a lot of little ones be happy, but I've even seen like elderly women be happy yeah. about it too, because you know, back in quote unquote their day, that was no shot. No nope. shot was any person of color being represented anywhere. Mm-hmm. And I I 
you know, I can't speak for Disney. I don't know what the fucking producers are thinking. Do I think that, like, intentionally back in the day they excluded colored people? Not necessarily. I could be very wrong about that. And I think it'd be naive of me to not even consider the, the possibility. Um, and I've also heard a lot of people talking about, oh, well, that's not the traditional thing. That's not this. That's not that. Which I do understand. But at the same time, traditionally, mm-hmm. racism is alive. So I don't think that holding on to tradition in this scenario is so important because, like she said, that's nurturing the youth that's seeing this and is saying, okay, maybe things are taking a change for the better. And I think that once the youth sees that they're being represented and can see the change like that happening, that's going to be good for the future because they're going to feel seen mm-hmm. and that's important so uh, absolutely extremely mm-hmm. important I, I agree with everything that you uh, you both had mentioned um according to a forbes article the trailer though received 1.5 million dislikes on youtube mm-hmm. all right so so many that youtube had to take the dislike feature off okay mm-hmm. now what you guys were saying was that the younger generation right now uh, are very uh, uplifted, are very excited about it, which is incredible. Mm-hmm. Now, what I saw when I was, you know, doing a little research on this is the people that are causing issues and, and stirring up beef um, are actually older um, males. Mm-hmm that are having an issue with this. And it, and it threw me off at first because uh, honestly, when I first heard that there was a bunch of, or, uh, uh, you know, about the situation, I had thought that it was going to be, you know, uh, you know. The, Embraced. The, well, actually, no, I, I had thought that, okay, the younger generation or whatnot, um, you know, they're not really going to have, uh, I feel like they've, grown up in they've seen change okay Mm -hmm. there there is slow change so this this is something good but um i just it it threw me off to have like older men having an issue Mm -hmm. about um you know this uh this because it's not even for them you know it's not for old men first of all ariel is a children's movie it is Mm -hmm. a children's concept yes a lot of adults love disney and like i'm not excluding that but it's for kids. So reality is, at the end of the day, some old-ass man with some shitty opinion that he formed back in the goddamn 60s does not matter. Like, I'm sorry, it's irrelevant. Opin- opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one. But I'm but, sorry, I don't care what anyone says. Not everybody's opinion is fucking relevant. Mm-hmm. It's just not. Mm-hmm. But also, like, what a disservice it is to this young actress because everyone being Mm -hmm. upset that she is a woman of color. And it's like, do you really think that's the only reason why she got it? She's a wonderful actress. She worked hard for that role. I mean, but, like, that doesn't even matter. Like, she fit the role for what it was. Why does everyone only focus on the color of her skin? Who cares? It's her as a person. It's her talent. She's a person. She's a talented young actress. And who cares? the color of her skin, why would that matter to anyone for any reason? She's the person who got the role. And if you want to say that you're upset because of authenticity, I can understand that. Because Mm -hmm. when people see adaptions of, like, books to screen and things like that, like, they want it to be what it is, what they read. Like, Mm -hmm. people want to see, like, even if it's a remake, like, they want it to be authentic in the remake and they're unwilling to see it from a different side right. and a different point of view. I mean, you know, you can't hire a purple Ursula. So, like, yeah. I mean, you know what I right. mean? Right, you're going to get mad if she's yeah. black, white, Asian, like, whatever it is, too. You and know, so it's just, like, to dishonor her for just the color of her skin, like, just to put her on that level. It's that's like racism she's also, right there. Like, she's also, like, a wonderful actress. So it's, like, maybe, like, you know, to say yeah. that that's the only reason why she got that role isn't really fair. Correct. Let's let's expand a little on that real quick. The the singer slash actress's name is uh, Halle Bailey. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you two are you are you guys familiar of no. her? I've of- heard her name float around before, but I really did not know too much about her until she she got this role. Nope. Yeah. So I guess she was involved um, with some music. Uh, her and her sister. I guess they had some kind of group or whatever called Chloe X Haley. 
I guess. Um, I never heard of that. <laughs> also, she's been involved with uh, performing in di- uh, different Super Bowls. Uh, she's been on the Grammys. She's mm-hmm. won. Mm-hmm. She's also acted in different TV shows and movies. But uh, bottom line, like you had mentioned, Lutina, that um, this young woman is extremely talented. Uh, mm-hmm. She's got a great voice. Mm-hmm. And she nailed, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? The, yeah, the she played her role. So I do want to talk real quick about a few arguments that were uh, listed on why or, or, you know, reasons why people are upset Mm -hmm. about this uh, decision. Okay. The first one is that The Little Mermaid is a Danish story, so Ariel should be white. All right. Number two. Mermaids live under the sea, therefore they would not have dark skin. <laughs> okay. The if third, you have that argument, <laughs> by the way, I fucking hate you. Uh, we, we're gonna cover. I you. hate you. But let's let's. The third is mermaids are a European mythical figure, and therefore Ariel should be white. <laughs> Hold on, I am European. And I, in fact, am not white. Yes. So there goes that Our one. Our girl Latina is light skin <laughs> over here, so let's Sorry. just get that right out of the way. <laughs> yes. And the fourth is making Ariel black is ruining childhoods, childhoods and changing the character. So. All right. Can you mention that first one? We got to go. We got to go uh, question by question on this because I am triggered left and right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because uh, I want to get both your takes on, on these facts. So the first one, let's go. Let's hit it real quick. The Little Mermaid is a Danish story, so Ariel should be white. Okay, America was founded by Native Americans, and not everybody is fucking Native American. What's the fucking point? I mean, that tra- tracks back to authenticity if it's really a Danish story, and that's what people like see it. But it's like, mm-hmm. are you really people who have followed the Little Mermaid, Mermaid yeah. hard? Did you watch the Little Mermaid when it was a series? Did on you Disney know that Channel? history before did this you came read out? That stuff, like, did you know any of that stuff, or is this stuff that you? trolled and found out I was about to say that's to like also have a relative argument so it's like you know that's but. a very good point that a lot of people whether it's this or other things they will do research mm. just to fucking make their point yeah. and to solidify yeah. their point of view and that doesn't mean shit yeah that They're don't mad. mean shit they're just mad. If you have to go out of your way to prove your opinion or point, which, by the way, you should never be trying to prove your opinion right because it's called a fucking opinion for a reason. <laughs> right. If you have to do all that to get your point across, you're not... You, there's something wrong with you. Like, that's not your point. You're trying, you're trying to start an argument. You're looking for a fight. And I think that that's a big issue is nobody cares mm-hmm. until it's something where they can argue and fight about. Yeah. So I don't think that that's even... Is it relevant? Sure. But to the actual situation, that's just a bullshit excuse. That's just people nitpicking and looking for things to to say, okay, she shouldn't. There shouldn't be a black (laughs) Ariel because this, that, and the third. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a bullshit point. Let's get on to the second one, though, because I'm here for it. (laughs) Mermaids live under the sea, therefore would not have dark skin. (laughs) Now, that was referred to actually by a, I believe, a, um, I, I forgot the the correct term, but a, a Someone who's apparently smart? Or whatnot. Yeah, like, yeah. and they were referring to, like, manatees and whatnot being in the ocean. Their skin is... So, like, white. here's the wild part. When you're making a live reenactment with human beings... Mm-hmm. So, humans can't live underwater. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay? Humans can't do that. And then touching also on another point about mermaids and the validity of that. Mythical creatures are interpreted in different ways throughout history in so many different manners. And the first thing that comes to my mind is vampires. Vampires are interpreted in so many different ways, so many different colors, so many different rules, things. Nobody fucking bat an eye at that. So why are you worried about how accurate these little points are when you have humans playing underwater creatures. Of course they're not going to be fucking underwater. So why are you worried about that? 
Well, also, I mean, I think we forget the story of the Little Mermaid sometimes. Mm-hmm. Ursula definitely made that deal with more than one other mermaid, so maybe more mermaids were on land as humans. Right. Walking on land and got right. a little bit more of a tan than the others. Exactly. And then maybe, maybe her spell lasted like five years instead mm-hmm. of just like a couple of days until marriage. You Genetic know, mutations. I mean, come on. Like, He's- Ursula probably made that deal with more than one mermaid, and that's how she kept her singing and voice. Duh. also, to be fair... We've only explored 5% of the fucking ocean, so you don't know jack shit but, I mean, about but what how is what. <laughs> ridiculous all that is? Because it's like, come on, guys. Like, don't like, you feel like kind of like an asshole trying to explain reaching. this? You're yeah, reaching. Yeah, you're reaching. You're looking for a way to solidify your fight that Ariel should not be black. It's stupid. It is so... And like what you had touched outdated. on about... Yeah, it's outdated and... The only way racism, it, first of all, it's never going to go away, unfortunately, because there's always going to be that one or two people that has, you know, their followers, whatever, for it to go down. Stop worrying about the fucking skin color. Does she play her role right? Does she get her lines? Does she have a beautiful voice? Does she fit the look of the part other than her skin color? Like, it just doesn't matter. It's about who a person is as a person. I don't, I don't, it just blows my mind that it's even a thing for people. And a lot of these people are the same ones who got all fired up about George Floyd, who didn't want Aunt Jemima on that fucking syrup bottle. You know, it's just picking and choosing your battles. And I'm sorry, a black Ariel is just not worth all this. It's not. Because what is a little kid going to do when they look up to an adult who's saying that this isn't right? There you go. You just raise another racist right there. That's correct. I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I do. Getting back to what you you had said to Lutina was so far these two um, arguments that are that are presented. Um, they do feel like they're that that they're reaching. Mm-hmm. All right, trying to find something. Yeah. Right. But um, let's you made a comment about this third one. <laughs> Mermaids are a European <laughs> mythical figure and therefore Ariel should be white. Correct. Like, my mom is 100% Maltese. It's an island in Europe. Grandparents immigrated over here, you know, and, you know, I am half European and therefore, I mean, granted my father is black, but... My mother, people mistake her because she's dark. Like, Europeans are quite dark, actually. Like, Italians and stuff like that. So, is her skin tone naturally lighter like yours? Is it dark from, like you mentioned, getting a tan? Okay. Right. right. Hers is more like a yellow olive. So, that's where I get, like, my light features from. But my dad isn't, like, Jamaican or anything. And Jamaicans are typically, like, more, like, darker Mm -hmm. in skin complexion and things like that. So he's a lighter, like, so I am fair-skinned for what you are, but I'm certainly not white. Like, you can tell that between my curly hair and my features. Like, it's very obvious. But Mm -hmm. if I were to choose to be, like, you know, identify as a white woman, you know, like, (laughs) it would be a whole thing. Like, you know, we're taught to be, like, proud of who we are. Like, it's, like, ingrained in us because so seeing representation and having a ridiculous notion that oh she's european so she should be white like i am proof of that i look more like her as a european than i do you know your typical ariel yeah for what you will so and i think that that also goes back to just wanting to keep the the tradition of the original ariel and it's just i just don't think that that's a realistic thing and again i just don't see why it's such a big issue to have someone of color playing this role Mm-hmm. You know, like I get where they're coming from, but at the same time, I, I don't because it's it's not even, um, you know, like an argument that um, I saw at one point was um, having a black Santa as opposed to a white Santa. Oh. Now, on that aspect, I kind of see it because it's Satanic, you know, throughout history since it's been a thing, he was white. And that's not really... You know, I'm sure that colored kids would like to see a colored Santa, but at the same time, I think that that, and I don't mean to be disrespectful with this phrase, but it would be a little weird to see. It would. However, a black Ariel, a fucking Disney movie, live remake? Well, that's weird to some people right now. And I mean, we'll touch on more of it later on, but I think it's a lot, you, you were talking a lot about racism. It's, there's so much hate. Yeah. And people don't like change. 
Yeah, but you know what? And, and that's half the problem. That's why racism is still alive. People hate change. Well, people need to get the fuck over it. Because, mm-hmm. you know, you hate change so much. Everyone's sitting on their ass getting paid for it right now. Didn't hate that change. All these students are about to have their shit paid off. You didn't hate that change. When it benefits a person, they don't mind change. It's because it's an inconvenience to what they think is right. That's why they have an issue with change. That's why they think it's weird, because they don't think it's right. Okay, it's so not change itself. It's, it's them. It's, it's who people are and just what they're willing to accept. Okay, so that ties into the fourth argument, which uh, was making Ariel black is ruining childhoods and changing the character. Like I mentioned, I think it's ruining the childhoods who, of the kids who have the parents who are over here talking about, oh, well, she shouldn't be black. She shouldn't be this. She shouldn't be doing that. That's what's really damaging. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think it's damaging to have it. I think it's damaging for little kids and, you know, even adults. Adults still have feelings and emotions, too. These elderly women who, like uh, the one TikTok I saw of this woman watching it, and she saw the black Ariel pop up, come out of the water, and mm-hmm. her eyes just fucking lit up. That's Because awesome. she was so... and. That's an elder, if I had to guess, she was probably in late 60s, early 70s, and she just loved it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I think that a lot of people are only seeing it from their point of view, too, which is another problem. People have a very hard time stepping into someone else's shoes and saying, okay, yeah, I can see why you would enjoy this. I can see why you would support this. And it's okay, but it's okay to have your opinion. I think it's very important to acknowledge that it is only your opinion. And that others are entitled to theirs too. And that doesn't mean that they're wrong. Doesn't mean that you're wrong. But it does mean that you, you know, you have to accept the fact that this is what's happening. It's, it's not, I, I struggle Mom. because I generally don't give a shit about the color of someone's skin. So mm. I just struggle so hard to understand why it's an I mean, issue. And it's changing the character. But this is not the first time Disney yeah. has done that. Like, does anyone remember Brandy being Cinderella? Like, you know, typically Cinderella is a pale white Mm -hmm. girl, but Mm -hmm. you had a black brandy and I believe a Hispanic uh, prince. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's been done before. So this is the same old song, Tired Dance. Like, that's the thing. Like, aren't people just tired of being outraged about the same thing? So it's like, that's the thing. And it's like, you know, part of me just wants to choose to think that, yes, people are genuinely upset about the character being changed because people like that when they see their adaption brought to life, like, you know, they like it to be the same. So it's a little hard for people to let go. I'm sure people, you know, aren't going to like the Hocus Pocus two movie that comes out, but they love the first one. You know, it just is what it is, but aren't you just so tired of being mad about stupid things? Like if I was mad every time someone got mad about a black person doing something, I would forever be mad. Yeah. Like it's, it's hate takes a lot of energy. It's so tiresome. So it's like, you know, I choose to side with the people who think, you know, your story has changed. Your character has changed. Correct. But that's, it's, because it's a remake, yeah. it, isn't it supposed to change a little bit? Yeah, like, you they're, know, not, for like they're not a, saying this is a yeah, fucking copy like, of what was before. Yeah, look at everything that has changed just in life and in general. Like, mm-hmm. I'm sure that people love having calculators and the internet in their pocket when they used to have to go on dial-up and not be able to receive phone calls at the same time or have everyone listen to your message be played yep. on the answering machine if someone's leaving you a message. Again, when, it, like, when it's you know, like for them, the change, change is good. And adaption happens and a remake of something means it's supposed to be different. You're supposed to get a different take. You're supposed to see a different view. You're capturing a different audience, and that's what they're doing. So, I mean... You're all social. You're not ruining children's lives. Like, you're not ruining your kid's life because it's a black woman on the screen. Like, get over it. But it will if you make it seem like it's the end of the world to your kids. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's what I... It's just... mm, You know? It's awesome. It's just... It's great. And that's the whole thing is... You know, for all we know, they could have fucking put this remake out to, you know, to test all of us, to see how everyone would react. Yeah. We're all fucking test subjects. Yeah, and the, they're, they're sitting there seeing, <laughs> you know, how are they going to respond? How are we'll they going to react? What is, what Trying is, to make the perfect specimen. Yes. What is society doing? And society ain't doing shit right now. Like, it's, 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 it's really disappointing to see people get this upset over a remake of a Disney movie. Yeah. If the kids are enjoying... The kids don't know the difference. Mm -hmm. They are only going to know the difference if you point it out to them and say, this is different, this shouldn't be like that, this woman is a woman of color, and it's wrong. Mm -hmm. 
again, you're breeding more hate and racism in the world. Let it happen. Like, it's not, is it directly affecting your life? Is it putting your life in danger? Is it keeping you up at night? Why the fuck do you care? Yeah. Yeah, for me, when I read those, you know, those arguments, Mm -hmm. um, they all made me sad, right? Um, Mm -hmm. Sad for people, sad for our world. To think that any of those uh, were legit statements to make a case is is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And what's also sad is, like, those were fairly reserved, too. Some people are getting nasty about it. Oh, of course. People, like you had mentioned... Everyone has their own opinion, and it's funny because lots of people love to talk shit, discredit, knock down um, people who are are out there doing things, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, not so much, this is a quick little sidebar, not so much to, I don't want to get into it, but I mean, what we do Mm -hmm. uh, involving the show, we get comments, excuse me, and whatnot, We, we ask for fan interaction all the time. And which is great. Um, whether, yeah, we got some fact checkers listening whether, to this podcast, by the way. We whether, see you. <laughs> whether, whether it be good or bad. And, I mean, we have sometimes, you know, we have received some, um, you know, not, not the greatest comments towards, towards certain things. And, and the way that we have to respond and everything is just, is just well, you know what, um, I mean... Thanks, y'all are thanks lucky, Josh. Listen. Y'all thanks. are lucky, Josh replies to that because I'm not as nice. So y'all <laughs> gotta understand something. <laughs> so, yeah. We, we gotta keep it. Gotta keep it civil. Yeah. But um, no, I mean, to get back to the last point though, that um, you know, Ariel being black is ruining childhoods. Um, it's, uh, it's absolutely disgusting. Uh, and and people who think that uh, you're racist, you're fucking racist if you think. I'm sorry, one hundred percent. Like I don't, I don't give a mm-hmm. shit. You really need. I'll straight a, up label them. <laughs> like so, a different mindset. I think that they are ruining childhoods by keep making these Disney animations into adult like reenactments. Yeah. Like honestly, I've only ever seen the Aladdin one, and I hardly really watch that. But right. I haven't seen like what is it. Pretty much every Disney, what, Beauty and the Beast has a live one. Like, I've never seen any of them. I was about and to like, say. And that's like, the other thing. If like, you're so attached And I have a kid, and I, I we're not sitting there watching people pretend to be, like, the, I, I, I know. Like, the cinematography, I mean, I'm sure The Lion King is cool, mm-hmm. but I just don't have a ring. Like, that's my childhood. Yeah. I want to leave it there. That's and the other thing. Nobody is fucking putting a gun to anybody's head and telling you yeah, to watch this commercial. Yeah, you don't commercial. have to watch it. You Nobody's telling any you of it. to watch this preview for the movie. Nobody's forcing you to go out and watch it once it comes out. If you don't like something in life, yeah, just fucking leave it alone. scroll past it and let it be. Because that's all it is, is people fucking scrolling on their phone, seeing this shit, and needing something to occupy their time and their minds. Because they've got nothing better to fucking do yeah. nobody is forcing anybody to pay attention to this <laughs> everybody is in charge of their own minds and what we do and don't do something else is happening it's so, a distraction yeah and distracting so us while if, they if it's do so upsetting for you make the choice to not fucking focus on it like you look stupider obsessing over something that bothers you like that Then not knowing, and you know, like, let's say you were to bring me on here and I knew nothing about this. I would feel better over being clueless about this entire situation than knowing everything about it because I took the time because I hate it so much to figure out every little detail, every little thing, every little background about where it originated and the countries and this, that, and the third. Because you just look stupid knowing that much about something that you hate. You look really dumb. Well, With something like this, at least. Obviously, there's other things that you can know a lot about, but I'm talking about this specific situation. You hate this You hate this trailer? You hate this remake so much, but you know every little fucking last thing about it? It hasn't even come out yet. That's fucking weird. <laughs> That's fucking weird. If you don't like it, if I don't like a person, I'm not knowing jack shit about them. Like, I don't give a <laughs> fuck. So, I, I don't know. It seems a little ass backwards to me. Yeah. The internet takes over and they blast it in your face. So you have no, you know about it, but that's the other thing. A lot of people talking all this shit online wouldn't dare say a word to a colored person's face, light skin, no matter what. Anybody, if they're not white, they would not say a fucking word about any of that to them. So, (laughs) yeah. One thing I, and sometimes like you don't even realize like when, um, you're saying things like out of context, like, um, 
not to call you out, but you keep it's saying okay. colored person. You right. should definitely say person of color. Person, okay. Like, yeah, yeah for sure. Like, because yeah. when you say it like that, like, it's been in great, like, it's derogatory in a way. Yeah. So, but you okay. don't know that because right. it, you just, it's all around. And sometimes you just get lost on a, like, thought. Yeah. But it's like, sometimes, like, you know, like, stuff like that, you don't even notice that it's not yeah. the best thing to be, like, saying. So, right. it's like definitely like a person of color because you're describing them as a person mh-hmm. and not the color of their skin. Right. So right. that you makes know, sense. That's important to acknowledge that makes them sense. as people. I hope at least with everything else that I've been saying, everyone yeah. understands that I no, do your understand point, that. Yeah, your okay. Point is definitely getting across <laughs> for sure. But All it's right. like, you know, it's important. Like, that's the whole point of this, right? To yeah. describe them as a person. Right. Not just the color of their skin, because yeah. they are so much more than that. Absolutely. And they deserve way more respect and yeah. to be seen. Because apparently she's had this great career. Like, honestly, I haven't heard of yeah, her, but I she's also either. much younger than I. So, mm-hmm. you know, she's just not in the things that I'm currently. And but that's like, interesting, too, the fact that she is this. I'm sorry, yeah. which way was a person of color? Yes. Okay. She is this woman of color. Exactly. But... She has all that she's established, but nobody really knew about her. Right. This but is her breakout role. A lot of, mm-hmm. like, give her that credit. A lot of white women who have the same exact accomplishments as her are up there and everybody knows their fucking name. Right. Exactly. Like, so that's another thing. I know very Melissa McCarthy thing. is Ursula, but I have no idea who she is. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, yeah. this is her breakout role. And now it's like, oh man, I'll be more likely to watch things that she's in it if I enjoy it, if I yeah. watch it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, right. Sometimes you just have to be introduced to them. And yeah. this is her breakout role, and she deserves that acknowledgement. She's done so many great things, had so many great accomplishments already. She clearly deserves to be in this place. And that's another thing I'm waiting for is everybody's going to start backtracking, too, once they realize how established she is and that yeah. she's not just some random woman that they threw into this Correct, fucking role. Right? She it's going to be, that. oh, well, you know, she's a great actor. It was just this role, okay? Mm-hmm. We didn't agree with this role. No, 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 no. Don't fucking backtrack now. You know exactly what your fucking problem was. Mm-hmm. Hands down. Yeah. I agree with that. <laughs> you knew it. All right. Uh, let's take a quick break. All right. Um, and when we come back, we'll talk the 1989 nostalgic classic, The Little Mermaid, other Disney remakes, and you'll hear our final thoughts about The Little Mermaid remake and the controversy surrounding it. So make sure you come back with us right here on the It's All Relative podcast. <laughs> Shit's the same now, explode next mode, I'm the same how Don't say you know me, just say you did When you see me sliding off to another crib Boom in the game now, I'm the same how The rap game will never be the same now Don't say you know me, just say you did When you hear why yo say that's it Welcome back to It's All Relative Still with us in studio, Lutina Davis so let me ask both of you, did either of you ever own a copy of the original Little Mermaid? I feel like as a kid we did. I feel like we had the VHS tape. As okay. a kid we had these like huge fucking like four foot by four foot cabinets in our living room mm-hmm. that had like shelving above them mm-hmm. and it was just filled with VHS tapes of like Nickelodeon, Disney, all that shit. So yeah. I'm sure it was definitely in there, yeah. Mm-hmm. What about you? Yeah, yeah, we owned it on VHS yep. for sure. Okay, as did I. So um, what are some of the things uh, in the movie that you guys remember best or that stood out to you? Or Let me ask you actually first, did, did you, you guys liked it? As yeah. a kid, yeah. Okay. oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. I don't, I, I don't quite remember the whole movie, mm-hmm. but this whole shit just has me remembering that Ariel is white with bright red hair. Right. Like it's just ridiculous how this whole situation has tainted my brain. Um, no, I, I remember it. Yeah, I remember I it being like everything else. Just seeing it as a kid <laughs> and just enjoying what was on the screen. Like never really thought too hard about it. You know. Okay, so what stood out to you then, Lutina? She was a mermaid, and mm. I was obsessed with like the ocean and <laughs> swimming and. Like, seafood was, like, my favorite food because, you know what? I was, like, six. So yeah. those are the kind of things that stood out to me. Like, I liked that she was a mermaid. Mm-hmm. Like, I literally, like, watched the show when it was on Disney. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. I followed it because I liked to swim. And, you know, I had swimming lessons when I was younger. Like, I just like to do that kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. I liked that she was a mermaid. <laughs> Is it that I liked her because there wasn't a... Uh, princess that looked like me when I was younger I don't know but like right. she was a mermaid so I was like that's awesome yeah. she's got crab friends she got a fish friend like 
Yeah. I thought it was so cool. Like, yeah. I like the animal stuff, like, always. So, yeah. and the ocean stuff, so. I was going to say, is, like, it, there was never anything that specifically drew me to. It's just a kid's yeah. movie that, you know, I think it's, it's like, one of those things that everybody knows, you know? It's yeah. just. Well, for me, it was coming out when I was, like, I grew up in the 90s. So, yeah. all these movies were coming out, all these new animations Yeah, y'all, I was born like in that. 2000, by the way, so keep yeah. that in mind. <laughs> so, you know, like, all this stuff was, like, my childhood. It shaped my childhood. So, mm-hmm. of course, I liked it. You know, it was what mm-hmm. it was. But I also like Beauty and the Beast. I also like, like, Snow White and this off, like, t- kilter Snow White that was, like, happily ever after, something different. Like, you know, I watched all of it. Right. So... Yeah, for me, ever since I was a child, you know, I've always been um, intrigued, in love, uh, terrified uh, of the ocean all in one, (laughs) okay? Uh, So my sister, though, and I had always had, like, you know, like like you had mentioned, Sarah, like a a big Disney movie collection. They were all VHSs, Mm -hmm. and... Little Mermaid was definitely uh, one of those movies that we owned or that I had owned when I was a kid, although I think it was my sister's. But I liked the perspective of being, you know, underwater. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it was different. And like I said, the ocean intrigues me. Um, The movie was very nostalgic, you know, for, for us. Yeah, growing for up, sure. right? Um, <laughs> like usual Disney songs, though, uh, or movies, excuse me, memorable songs yep. yeah. are in them. Under right? the sea. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone knows. My son sang that song in kindergarten at camp, so it's like, oh, you know, another reason I like the movie. Yeah. Like, you know, I see it for what it is. It's a great movie, especially for the 90s when it came out. Mm-hmm. Right. For what it was then. Like, uh, yeah, and you, you know, it's, it's a fish. Like, she's a mermaid. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's the ocean and that stuff is cool. It's funny because, uh, a quick side note, my uh, my boss, while well, he's, my coworker was talking about it, he's like, yeah, you know, when our boss is working, he'll be whistling. And I was, I was listening to it, and all of a sudden I realized he's whistling the fucking Little Mermaid. And my boss didn't even realize that's what he was doing, but yeah. apparently that's what he's doing. And it's just like, yeah, it's a childhood thing that everybody kind of knows. And Whistle while he works and Snow White. Yeah, you know, yep, like there that you stuff go. is just ingrained in you because you Disney was what it was a wonderful kids' movies, you know, as things come out because the internet now exists and right. people can find things a little easier. You know, people formulate opinions. Right. but And foul play in Disney. But hey, guys. Ariel was a great. I loved it. Guys, loved fun it. fact. There's fucking foul play with every big company. There's going to be foul play everywhere. So, you know, it's... Yeah, well, let's quickly then move on to some other Disney remakes then. Um, have you guys seen any, or are you familiar? Dude, with I didn't even. So when like the first Frozen came out, I watch Frozen all the time. I know the first movie. When the second Frozen came out, I still haven't sat through that, and that's a relatively new thing too. Yeah. So I never really, I and not even just Disney movies. I've never really been interested in remakes. I mean, my favorite show, The Vampire Diaries, has a couple of spinoff series, the originals, and. Um, uh, the legacies as well, and I'm just not interested. I'm very much like. See, once... I only watched the originals. I didn't yeah. watch Vampire Diaries or Legacies. I just watched right in between. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like it, you know. Sometimes you just, and I don't think it's, you know, me not wanting to change my ways. I don't have anything against the remake of Ariel, mm-hmm. but if you had to say, do you? And it's not. Do you want to watch the Ariel with the uh, black one, or do you want to watch Ariel with the white mermaid? It's. Do you want to watch the remake or do you want to watch the original? I would prefer the original because that's just Mm -hmm. what it is to me. It's, you know, it's nothing of the sort with what's in the actual movie. It's just the original. Well, like I said earlier, I haven't really seen... I saw Aladdin, Okay. you know, but I saw Aladdin in Broadway. That was cool. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So, Mm -hmm. but I would support it more in that way. Like, like, if I'm going to watch people do it. Yeah, I mean, Broadway is Broadway, Broadway too. They be doing things the best. So why would I watch it on my screen? Right. <laughs> I uh, haven't seen them. So, yeah, some of the remakes are Lady and the Tramp. Mm-hmm. Oh. Dumbo. Aladdin, which you had mm-hmm. mentioned. Uh, Beauty and the Beast. Uh, Lion King. 101 Dalmatians. Jungle Book, to name a the few. Jungle Book. Wow. I forgot about that. Isn't Dumbo... I think Dumbo is directed by Tim Burton, isn't it? I want to say. 
I'm not, not too sure. positive not sure. on that. I, I would hope so. He's a fucking incredible. Anything he's a part of usually is Well, I don't bomb. know, because for the ones that I saw, I didn't like and Dumbo. What did you Dumbo, see? Okay. And I didn't like the remake. Uh, I didn't really like Lady and the Tramp. And the I, animal ones are weird. And I didn't like Aladdin. And that one was the most disappointing because Aladdin was one of my favorite original and this is Disney the thing movies. too is ruining it for yourself <laughs> and like right. yeah if you really love it like you're gonna go back to the original mm-hmm. but it's just like and it's hard because that is kind of a contradictory statement to what i was saying earlier but again nobody's forcing you to watch a remake mm-hmm. so if you prefer the original over the remake fucking watch the original but don't shit on the remake because there's some people who that is helping and that is encouraging and that's making them feel good about themselves so why are you gonna shit on that Right. Yeah, no, I, I completely understand and agree. Being a fan, though, of the Disney movies or the classics, yeah. you know, you're uh, you're going to be drawn to want to see the right. remake. See what they which, do, yeah. Which which was, I was excited for when uh, Aladdin had come out, you know, like I said, because it was one of my favorite originals. I think one of the biggest different things that made that made such a such an effect to it was that the genie wasn't the voice, you know what I'm saying, or whoever voiced the genie, it wasn't Robin Williams. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which was this before classic. he passed at the remake came out? Mm, I don't remember. Yeah. I don't think so. I know though. Oh wait, because Will Smith was the genie. Yeah. That's right. Well, and even so, that is still like an incredible substitute, first of all. But like, I see what you're saying still. Definitely different. And it wasn't even so much by looks at all, because I, I could give two shits about that. Yeah. The voice, voice quality. The voice. And yeah, everything. So that's why it was a little different to me. But one of the ones that was uh, quite enjoyable was Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. The remake um, uh, was very well done, in my opinion. But the one remake that I think that was the best was The Lion King. And really? It, and it was because that everything was animatronic, all right? Mm-hmm. So you couldn't have these issues of color, all yeah. right? Yeah. Now, uh, am I saying that, you know, The Lion King was better than the original? <laughs> uh, no. Yeah. Uh, once really? again... Uh, If I had a choice, I would probably choose the originals Mm -hmm. over over any remake that I've seen so far. Just for what it is, not having to do with people in it, just right because that's what it is. Right, but getting back now to the Little Mermaid, Mm -hmm. did either of you guys see the trailer? Have you have you guys seen it? I saw it. So that video I was talking about with the older black woman who Mm -hmm. was watching it, Mm -hmm. that's pretty much what I saw of it. Um, and what I saw, it was like, they kind of kept her, her face hidden for a little while. They had her swimming around and stuff. And Mm -hmm. then she kind of came up and that's when you could really see the color of her skin and who she was and stuff like that. Right. Um, it's a very, it's a very nice trailer that they put out, you know, like it's. I don't see anything yeah. wrong with the fucking trailer. I don't see anything wrong with any of it. Well, like. Okay, so, so then let me just ask you then real quick then, Sarah. What, what was your first reaction when you saw um, that Ariel, when, when she pops up and stuff? And you saw Honestly, it? so when right before she popped up, I was just watching like... Um, so I remember uh, my cousin Angela, shout out Angela, when we had gotten the like high definition version of that first Frozen we were talking about, just seeing all the little details and like the snow and just how they do it. Mm -hmm. That's what I was folks. I was looking at fucking production quality (laughs) when I was watching it originally. (laughs) And when she came up out of the water, I was just like, okay, like she doesn't have the red hair. Not a big, she definitely has red hair. Does she? She definitely has red hair. Cause that is the first thing that stood out to me. I was like, I wonder if they like put like weave in her hair to like dread it through for it to be be red or did they color it? Because that's an awesome red color. Is it like just done because it's all like underwater. So Mm -hmm. obviously they're using like a lot of like digital stuff. So did they just do that too? Because sometimes it ruins your hair to like, Bleach it and color it like that. Always you know? in the hair. I was so, gonna say I'm not. Again, I was, I was wondering. That's what I was wondering. I was like, huh. I wonder if her hair was real. Like you know, because yeah. like I mean, regardless, uh, like how did they do it? 
Right. Like, how did they do it? Like, the like, video that I'm referring to that I was watching, I was watching someone taking a video of this woman sitting on the couch. It's a video of the TV, and it was, mm. like, however many feet away. So, apparently, she did have red hair. But, you know, yeah. it was. she looks different. She looks different from the Ariel that we know. But I didn't have an issue with that. Mm. It, it wasn't, like, something that shocked me. It wasn't, I think that if I had mm-hmm. seen that, not knowing anything about it beforehand, that mm-hmm. it wouldn't have phased me. I would have just been oh, yeah. like, oh, so that's who they chose. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I really didn't. So, yeah, I wasn't even focused on who was playing what. I was just like, damn, that looks like some good-ass quality shit. I'm more interested to see what Flounder and Sebastian are going to look like. Yeah. Honestly. Like, what's that going to be They just got, like? like, infants dressed well, in I shells mean, and shit. They're, like, literally, like, they're fish. Like, how are you going to make a talk and, well, like, it's look it's not realistic. accurate. Latina, like, it's not accurate because they're not underwater, remember? Uh, yes, so they can't so have like, the colored <laughs> skin or anything. You know what I mean? Don't forget so about like, that. That's what I'm more interested in. I'm like, oh, man, I want to see Flounder. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the hair know? color. We're very concerned about her hair color. We're, like, we're concerned about the integrity of her hair. Yeah, we like, make sure Hallie's hair for that. You deserve to have that digitally put in. We got to check on Hallie's hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me then ask you real quick then, Lutina, because you said the first thing that you had, your first reaction was, was about the red hair. Yeah. What was your first thought when you realized that Ariel was not white? I mean, it wasn't, I don't really think about that stuff. Like, that stuff really doesn't cross my mind because Mm -hmm. I can't think about it because just look around. Like, there's so many different things. And I grew up. We have three different ethnicities sitting at this table right now. Yeah, like, I grew up, like, with the late 90s and, like, early 2000s, like, transition of, like, you know, it all, like, it's continuous change, it's continuous acceptance, and it's, like, it's taken a lot for me to accept myself. Like, I've never seen representation really growing up. I mean, you know, like I said, with, like, Brandy, and, you know, there's a couple of them that stick out. But I always think about, like, how fortunate, like, my nieces are to see that, like, you can be, like, Lizzo, like, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, that's awesome. Like, even in this, like, older age of mine, like, it's you still try to resonate with people. So representation is cool. And everyone deserves to feel seen and, like, be made people. Mm -hmm. Like, but, like, how is it that we have to be accepted on a screen? Like, how is it that just us existing still needs to be accepted? Yeah. Like, what? Yeah, that's that's worded beautifully. Existence going to be, like, not uncomfortable for you. I'm, like, your existence is uncomfortable for me because you're just a human being. And, like, I don't interact well with human beings. Mm -hmm. But it's, like, you know... (laughs) But why is it that because you see me and the way I look that, like, you're automatically off-put or going to assume a certain thing about me? Right. Like, you right. Know? And it's like, why is it that you still think that way? And it's right. like, you know, obviously I think that way too sometimes about certain things, but it's like, you know, never about, like, because you're black or because you're white or because yeah. you're Asian or because anything, like. It's just because, oh, yeah. you're a shitty human. Right, Not and because, a lot like, of it... Oh, it's because you're black. I'm like, no, yeah. like, you're a shitty human because no. of what's on your inside. Like, yeah. to the core, I don't like the things that, like, you say. That's why I think you're a shitty human being. Right, right. Like, you know. So why does it always have to come back to the way I look? Yeah. Because there's so much more to me than just the way I look. Yeah, and I feel like, you know... It's 2022, and one thing that uh, I say a lot is because I do, I haven't posted recently, side note, but on TikTok a lot, you know, a big thing is people will automatically attack your appearance. And I'm sitting here, and I'm just like, it's 2022. You can't come up with anything more creative than going after someone's weight, skin color, hair texture, this, that, and the third. Like, you can't get more creative. Insult me as a person, and then maybe you'll get a reaction out of me. Yeah, that's how I feel. At this point, it's 2022, and I think that going after anybody's appearance for any reason, it's just asinine and stupid, and it shows that you've got nothing better to do. You've Mm. truly got nothing better to do, and you have nothing else to fucking go after if all Mm. you can do is go after what you see. Mm Mm-hmm. Facts. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, so let me tell you guys then real quick. Um, when I saw the trailer, all right, it had ended. I had a few immediate reactions right away, okay? The first was when I saw that Ariel wasn't white. You know, I thought, oh, all right. Um, then I thought, this is dope because this is different, all right? Now, once again... I grew up watching the original where she's, you know, 
super white and super red hair. <laughs> so her appearance was definitely different. Looking but, like a fucking tame Chucky doll. Right, right. <laughs> But when I had heard how many people were against it, like I had said before, uh, I was I was a little taken back, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I wasn't surprised, though. That's we, the sad part. Yeah. Um, like we said, we, we, we live in a world uh, full of hate, mm-hmm. right, and, and self-entitlement. But let me tell you why I think it's so great that Ariel is being played by the actress Halle Bailey a woman of color, okay? It gives all these young children, which I think you had mentioned, Latina, but people that don't look or let look like her, it gives them a chance to see like a quote-unquote princess or a mermaid, you know, Mm -hmm. whatever, and be like, you know, yo, she looks like me, Mm -hmm. and and I want to be like her. N- not in like the the mermaid type, right. but mm-hmm. but princess sense. The way or, she carries herself, how she talks, you know, being with animals, or you know, like wow, like I see a person on the big screen that looks like me, mm-hmm. like that is so different, right? And, and that was always an interesting point for me because, like, I realized, like, I, I'm white. I grew up, you know, very used to seeing white princesses, white. Pretty much, I feel safe saying majority white everything with growing up in cartoons and seeing things and whatnot. And I don't know if it was just like me with my personality as a kid, but I never thought to look at a princess and be like, oh, well, that's cool. She looks like me because it was never really a thing that crossed my mind. Not for one reason or another, you know, whether I just didn't admire princesses as much as the next little girl or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. So I always thought that that was an interesting thing, too is that not every child is, you know, looking at these movies and saying, why doesn't they, why don't they look like me? You know, that's just not a thought that crosses (laughs) every child's mind. You know what I was thinking? And that doesn't make it okay, but I'm just saying, you know, different points of views. Yeah, when I watched these movies, another one of my favorite movies was The Swan Princess, where she would turn into, like, a swan at night for some reason, like, so I watched that on repeat, and all I could think about is, man, I wish I could turn into a swan. Right, like, right. you know, man, I wish I was a mermaid and could swim under the water like yeah, that. Like, yeah. and talk, like, that's the stuff I thought about mm-hmm. as a child. Like, I didn't care. I was just right. like, damn, she gets to look like a swan half her life? Yeah. Like, uh, that, you know, like. Damn, I've never <laughs> heard of the swan princess. That's much better than Shrek and turning into a fucking <laughs> ogre after midnight. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> But I relate so much with Shrek. Yeah. (laughs) That sounds like another episode. (laughs) Yeah, I was a fan of the first Shrek movie. Fuck yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Cameron Diaz. Donkey. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but I mean, so let me know if either of you can relate. I mean, you, Latina, probably more so just uh, because we're similar in age. But, you know, for me being a kid in the late 80s, early 90s, when I watched the movies... You know, the heroes, the people of importance, whatever, they were always, however they were portrayed, like you had said, sir, they were always, though, portrayed as as white people. Right. And if you did happen to see a person of color, they were typically, you know, portrayed as, um, you know, like a a typical stereotypical role. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And I think that's another thing too is stereotypes are a lot of things like like you said about that person mentioning to you um, while you were in your hometown talking about oh someone like you over here whatever mm-hmm. they had, the comment that they made to you mm-hmm. stereotypes play such a big role for no fucking reason and well yeah. and I shouldn't say for no reason some people regardless you know your skin color some people are out there proving their stereotypes to be correct mm-hmm. and that's not just black people that's not just Asians that is everybody Mm -hmm. everybody and it's not even with skin color either you know teenagers always on their fucking phones teenagers are proving that to be true every fucking day it's like there's that (laughs) but you cannot just apply a stereotype to a stranger and think that they fit that that box that's not that ain't it you know absolutely right and yeah and I feel like all those issues you know if a child were to see all that and whatever it, it could be damaging Right. You know, to mm-hmm. them or cause forms of insecurities. Yeah. yeah. What have you. Yeah. It happens every day. Right. So, you know, one of the things that I've heard also that people have mentioned or complained about or said was that the uh when the movie's released, that um they're they're not gonna go and watch this because 
um, of of Ariel being black. Okay. Now I think we did cover a little of this in the beginning. Sarah, your response to it was then like, "Cool, don't see it then." Yeah. What yeah. the fuck, right? Which uh, I agree. Yeah. I, I think I think that's a good good response, but that also. I feel like is so damaging because it hurts the movie. It hurts mm-hmm. the actress, the actors. Yeah. It yeah. hurts everything, especially if you are a fan of the original, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And you liked it. Okay. So why would you not then? Why, yeah. And right, At least just to see. And if you say, fuck it, let's go see it. Even though I don't really want to, and you don't like it, fine. Then you don't like it. But I think that that's kind of, you can see that from two ways. It's damaging to the actress and for the ratings and views and numbers for them to not go see it. But at the same time, are they really going to care about those numbers and shit when it's some of these people saying we're not going to go see it to their kid? And again, damaging the youth for when they're older. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, numbers, as far as how well the movie does, I think in this case, it really shouldn't matter. Because if, you know, a big part of them using Hallie to play this role was to be inclusive and to represent everyone, then I think they should care about getting that message across as opposed to being worried about the numbers and the backlash because those numbers might go up, but then the backlash might too. And then the damage to the youth might too. And then the negative comments might too. And the stereotyping and everything that we've gone over is just going to intensify. Yeah. Yeah. So, it always does. It just carries over. Yeah. So, I mean, regardless of whether the, the movie itself does well, I think that if they want to focus on getting the message of representation across, that's what they should do. And for all we know, Disney couldn't even have had that in mind. Again, they might have seen Hallie for the person that she was and said, we like you for this role. Get on screen. Which hopefully, yeah. yeah. I would really Which hope sure. so. Which hopefully, I would yeah. really fucking hope so that this wasn't just Disney trying to fit in. Like, no. I, I, that's not what I want to hear either, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I do think, though, that, you know, the uh, controversy causes money, okay? Yeah. And the fact that now there's an issue <laughs> with this. Good yeah, I'll probably watch there, it now, even though I've never really watched any of them. This is probably going to be one I end up watching. So <laughs> there you go. Thank you. The podcast I have to. <laughs> you know. But, but correct. That's what I'm saying. Controversy causes money. People will, I think that even though there's a lot of people that are talking their shit and saying that they're not going to go see it, they disagree with everything about the movie. I think more people are gonna go see it you know what i'm saying it's kind of silly to disagree with it like you know and then you have to hope that most people are disagreeing with it because it's like different it's a change of character and like some people really like hold on to that like refuse to watch shows or like movies because Mm -hmm. oh it was not like that in the book like you know it's kind of disappointing when you have it, like, such a perfectly written screenplay, right, in the pages, and you take something and change it for, like, cine- like you know, just... Cinematic value, yeah. yeah. And it's like, you know, but sometimes that's necessary. Yeah. Like, you know, like, there's another controversy going on with, like, I don't know if you watch Game of Thrones, but, like, the new show, you know, one of the houses, like, they are portrayed by black actors. Mm-hmm. But, however... In the books, they are uh, said to have, like, white hair and purple eyes, while the other ones have, like, white hair and blue eyes. So it's, like, in a way, like, that makes more sense because how do you tell the difference? Isn't it easier to tell the difference between, like, the whole outer appearance of someone instead of just their eyes? Right. When they're so, like, in the book, so closely matched. Like, that's the point. But when you're watching it on screen, you want to be able to easily follow it. I was about and to say, And need yeah. to be able to see a difference and stuff like that. So it's, like, sometimes, yeah. People do get cast in certain roles because a certain role calls for a different color skin from one to the other. But that's not a negative thing either. That's no. like finally, like, you know, I'm being, you know, finally used it to doesn't my matter. advantage. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's like sometimes it just is what it is because that's what the director has in mind. Mm-hmm. And that's okay too, if like, you know, that's what the director had in mind. But it's not a negative to receive a role because you fit the look that the director is trying to go for even if that is a mixed person or a person of color like that's his view or or like his vision his interpretation that he's trying to have and he deserves that artistic freedom as Mm -hmm. well so it's like you have to see it from different points of view as well and it's Mm -hmm. like as upset that people get 
that adaptions of movie of books to movies or shows like they have to understand that things do have to be changed sometimes and remakes deserve to be remade in a different artist vision right mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. you're disgracing the artist for the point of view or like whatever picture they're trying to paint by just being so negative about it and they're not they don't need that either like they don't deserve that to be and told I, that their art is garbage yeah and the whole thing too is that like i feel like a lot of people want to see different points of views and stuff you know in school we were given a topic and told to go about it how you want mm-hmm. here's the base do what you want with this jazz it up how you want yeah. i think that a lot of original movies original books stuff like that is that base And whatever people want to do with it from there, some are going to be great. Some are going to fucking suck. Yeah. But either way, it's everybody's different interpretation of that. And as long as, again, some shows, you'll never be... Listen, you again, back to the Vampire Diaries. You asked me about the originals or the fucking legacies. (laughs) I'm probably going to tell you to fuck off because I've never seen it. Don't care for it. I want Mm -hmm. the original shit that I know. Yep. And that's okay. I want the original Ariel. I want the original Aladdin. I want... should it's, have been left around. Because it's not like we don't like the new movies that Disney is coming out with. Mm-hmm. Like, they've come out with great new movies yeah. and stuff like that. So you're targeting the audience in great new features. Like, you don't have to keep redoing the old classics. That's right. kind of how I feel about it. Yeah. Who wants to watch the same thing over and yeah. over and over and over wasn't and over Wasn't Dumbo, again? like, mad sad? Like, why would you want to remake a sad movie like that? Right. Like, with... And Make it mention, more realistic. Like, not to do mention, you feel this sadness? Like, all what? these Disney movies have like some like horrific actual <laughs> ending that was hidden from <laughs> right. us as children. Like, this bitch went off and was a prostitute. This bitch killed herself. <laughs> like, what? Right. So either way, I think that you know people getting mad over any type of remake or different representation interp- uh, interpretation, whatever it might be, whatever you want to say, it's just stupid. Just. <laughs> Don't fucking watch it. Mm-hmm. Just don't don't see it. Don't acknowledge it. It takes a lot of energy to hate something. It yeah. takes so much energy. And just in general, really quick, my advice to anybody who has hatred in their heart for literally any shit like this or anything, take that energy and put it into yourself instead and get yourself to a better spot because I, I can't I can't fathom like having such a strong dislike for something like this. Like it just doesn't it doesn't fit into my brain. It doesn't. I, I, I become very reckless and ignorant when I talk about stuff that I just like shit like this because I don't see why it's such a fucking problem. It, it's really not. I mean, I agree. I think we should reiterate that, you know, people are so upset and, and angry. And, yeah, and getting nasty and racial slurs and just, oh, for what? Towards a fictional cartoon character. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, uh, just... Let that a sink in for a second. Fictional <laughs> yeah. cartoon character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. It's like there's a real human being who's going to be offended by this anywhere. You right. know? <laughs> right. I mean, for me, I, you know, my last thoughts real quick. Ariel yeah. arises out of the fucking Atlantic Ocean <laughs> and like slaps me sideways or some shit like that. <laughs> no, but I, I support Halle Bailey. You know, mm-hmm. I, I support the choice of her playing Ariel. I support the movie. And despite all the hate, uh, I hope it does well when it's released on May 26, 2023. Um, I hope either, the good overcomes the bad. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me, are either of you going to go see it? Yeah. Plan to see it at some point? I will. I don't know. I don't know if I will. I think I would have to watch the original Ariel first, just kind of refresh my memory of what I'm supposed to be comparing it to. Oh but goodness. then again, even so that's like an interesting... That. Yeah, I How was about, about to instead? say, yeah. that's also an interesting <laughs> thing is maybe I won't do that. Maybe I'll just go and watch the remake for what it is, for what it is and not no have comparison. anything. Oh, my goodness. So, so that's yeah. probably the best So idea. honestly, I'd be interested to do that, you know, especially because now we're doing this episode. And I've never really watched many Disney remakes, to be honest. Again, born in 2000, so a lot of these remakes aren't like you know but um yeah no so i i think it'd be something i I might go see just you know for the sake of this and the fact that i'm not a big movie watcher in general so let me get that out there too um but But yeah just might we do the drive-ins a lot drive-ins are fun but i don't like going to sit at a movie it's that people i'll definitely watch it on disney plus when it comes out it's that people thing you know like it's fucking can't promise i'll go and sit at a movie because the other thing is if i'm sitting there in the movie and someone makes a really nasty comment near me i'm gonna get mad too Mm -hmm. like people are out of pocket like that 
And I would just rather like, oh, yeah, Sarah, you can keep your mouth shut. Like, yeah, I could, but it's fucking wrong that they're making comments like that. You know, it's. Yeah, I don't really sit still well for that long. Like, I need to be able to pause the movie <laughs> in the middle of it, get up. Just a couple of ADHD <laughs> bitches. Go get a different <laughs> snack and come sit back down and regroup. Like, because I have to go outside to, you know, like smoke and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I'm not going to get through like. A two-hour movie. Like, I gotta need a break. That pen smoke. in your sleeve. Like. You didn't hear it from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. Uh, like I said, it, as, as long as as long as it's being watched, yeah. who cares yeah. where? I will definitely you know watch it. It deserves Plus, appreciation. Do. It yes. does. It does. Because even like what we were saying, if the director casted her for just who she is and not to be all inclusive stuff like that, then I think that she. Absolutely. She deserves the credit anyways, but she deserves that yeah. she extra little boost. Role. Because she, she's dealing with all this, know. too. Well, she shouldn't have to. A lot That's of people miserable. are hating on this woman just for being her and for doing That's her miserable. job. She the, Her job is to be this uh, established actress, yeah. you know, award-winning human being. Mm-hmm. So I think it sucks that she also has all this backlash for just living her life. Yeah. She didn't cast herself yeah. in that role. How long does it have to take before you are okay with me existing? Like, Yes, ask, and when you that, said that, that earlier, that I loved how you worded like, that. Wait, what? Like, yeah. That's all she's trying to do. She's just trying to live her life, yeah. man. Let she's making be. that bag. I think all y'all are a little jealous. Yeah. Honest, but, mm. Living her life. Yeah. Um, anything else that you guys want to say about this or... Or anything in general before like we I wrap said, it up. If you're wasting your energy getting upset over shit like this, and not even just this, anything that could relate to this topic, the same concept, the same ideas, work on yourself. Do better. Be better. Scroll yeah. past it. Ignore what you don't like. Don't waste energy on things that you don't like. <laughs> because even if you're just thinking about it, you're already wasting energy. You're wasting your valuable lifetime on this planet to bitch about things that you don't even agree with. You don't agree with it. That's fine. Move on. Move yeah. On. I mean, and also, black women are doing amazing things right now. Like, Lizzo just played this, like, rarity, like, flute. Apparently, it's, like, this crystal flute that's, like, Ooh. been, like, on display forever. Like, she's the first and only person to ever have played it because she is. Also, I mean, people see her and might stereotype her, but she's also classically musically trained, and she mm-hmm. can play that flute. And she's one of the only like the only person to ever play that like that's history and that's freaking awesome like right. you know see my and only it's like you know it's so awesome to see women accomplishing things for like not just being like a prostitute or a, a drug dealer or some pimp's like left hand to run his drug business like right. why why does a woman always have to hold like a black woman always have to hold another woman down like it's so great to see this positive stuff mm-hmm. and the turn of it so it's like not even like that we haven't been necessarily represented, but, like, this is such a positive representation all around, too. Yeah. And it's, like, everyone is choosing not to see the positive to it and just choosing to be mad and feed off of everyone's hate. And it's, and you yeah, know, that's great thing. things deserve to be acknowledged. And that's, like, a cool thing that, like, a bigger black woman did. And it's, like, awesome. Like, yeah. classical music. Now right. maybe your kid will want to play an instrument and... Yeah. Bands will come back to school and it'll be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like all that stuff deserves representation too. Like she deserves to be credited for the person she is. And I'm a little weary on Lizzo only because like I think she's incredible. And again, I don't hate her because of how she looks. I I myself used to be a big girl. So me hating big girls, fucking stupid (laughs) and hypocritical. And it doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter skin mm-hmm. color. I do wish she'd back off a little bit, <laughs> just her kind of music. Uh. And just, <laughs> if you are trying to be a role model for a certain group of children, yeah, it's good to be confident in yourself. Yeah. Cover up a little bit. <laughs> be a little bit That's more PG. True. That's my only thing mm-hmm. with women in that specific yeah, position. But I think all women but, need to cover up more. Yeah, <laughs> and it's not like, you know, nobody's trying to be a prude. Nobody's trying to tell you to hate your body. Yeah, do but, what you do. You know, but no, as a whole, I agree with that. The fact that she's yeah. representing, she's making history, she's yeah. doing the damn thing. But I don't have a right to tell anyone what to wear, so everyone do you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know. Maybe don't always do you in front of me, but. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I choose to follow her. Ask for it. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, I want to wrap it up real quick with a quote that was recently released by Jody Benson on her Instagram account. And for those of you who don't know who she is, 
Uh, she's the actress who voiced Ariel in the original 1989's Ooh. animated The Little Mermaid. Interesting. I haven't heard this. Yes. Um, her quote was addressing Halle Bailey. Benson wrote, quote, I'm so proud of you and your beautiful performance as Ariel, end quote. Simple. So, yeah. And that's, yeah. There was no, I'm proud of you for overcoming the hate about your skin. There was no nothing. It's just your performance and what you did as a person, beautiful. Yeah. And that's that. And I think if the voice of Ariel is, the original Ariel is fucking saying that, nobody else has a right to be mad. <laughs> nobody. Well, yeah. I'm definitely going to see it. So I can't wait to see what all the fuss and huff and puff was yeah. about. Yeah. I hope that a lot of people that are hating on it and run their mouths do take the second, you know, the couple hours out of their day to go see it. And I hope that they change their mind. I, I really do. Because mm -hmm. I think that um, if that's your only reason for not going to see it because of the, you know, the color of the woman who's playing Ariel, I think that you need to do some self-reflection because that goes beyond just it being the original thing. Because as my understanding, everything else is quote unquote normal with the movie, right? And I use yeah. that term very loosely. Please don't. There's anyone probably be a fish and a crab that. in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's just very like, authentic. <laughs> like I just. Mm. Uh, no, just, I mean it's it's, just, it's hard. It's hard for people who don't see the problem with it to yeah, like you know take it seriously. Yeah. Like there's no like it's like if you tell me that you have beef with this Ariel, I'm gonna laugh in your face. <laughs> it's just so <laughs> like weird I'm going to, to laugh about. at you. It's just so weird. Yeah. yeah, it's just so weird. And like I said, if I was mad every time someone got mad, you'd be a pissed off person. I'd yeah, be mad forever. <laughs> All right, so yeah, everyone go see the movie. Um, I, I feel like it's gonna do it's gonna do well. Either way. Thank you. But Latina, thanks yes, again yes, for thank coming back coming. on. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you for asking me. Absolutely. Always with these hot topic things going on. <laughs> yes. Uh anyone or anything that you wanna plug or shout out? Nope. No. Not today. Okay. Um what are some of your social media accounts? You want people to follow me? It's just my name. It's Instagram, <laughs> L U T E N A three A's. So that's that. Awesome. I don't do much of anything else. Okay. You know, I'm a 90s baby, so all that stuff is above me. <laughs> Sarah. TikTok. The, yeah, born in 2000. So my Instagram <laughs> is Sarah with two H's underscore Molnar, M-O-L-N-A-R with two R's. And my TikTok is Sarah J. Molnar. And you guys can always find me at Josh underscore Toth3. That's my Instagram. And my Facebook is Joshua Toth. Uh, Big shout out to Stellar Sound and Media and our editor, Jackson Wallace. Um, those of you who are local, uh, we got a special shout out to Robo's Deli. Mm. We've heard from multiple sources that you guys are fans of the show. So we appreciate the support and um, and get at us. Yo, Let, that's awesome. Yeah, let's, Real quick, let's I've been going to Robo since I was like fucking... Eight or nine years old, by the way. They're familiar with the show. They listen to it. They're actually fans of it. And um, Bro, I next time you go in there, yeah. let them know. Tell them that you... Uh, <laughs> Yo, you all recognize this voice or yeah. what? <laughs> <laughs> Tell them no. that you the new voice. Yo, yeah. I've been going to Robo since they... they I live so close. They used to fucking deliver shit to my house. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. No, I've heard uh, from from a few people, though, that they have mentioned, because when they walk in, um, the previous co-host, yeah. Tim, uh, he had mentioned that as well. So That's fucking dope. Um, now I'm going to have to go in there. Yeah, no, but um, big shout- chicken cheddar. Yeah, big <laughs> shout out to you guys. Um, I've heard that the uh, the cowboy on a wrap, uh, I keep hearing good things about that. That so. shit's good, and the chicken cheddar that they have is fucking incredible and comfort food to the absolute max. So Right on. Yes. So get at us. Let's, yeah, let's definitely. Sponsorship. Let's hear from you. But um, all right. If you guys liked what you've heard today, please leave a quick review and a rating wherever you listen to. And don't forget to subscribe. That way you'll never miss an episode when they drop. Uh, Sarah, you want to tell everyone where they can find us at? Absolutely. We are on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, Anchor, Google, and we have our Twitter account up now, which I've been trying to post just as we post episodes and stuff like that. Um, we'd like to see more of you on Twitter. It's not too active right now with the fans. So if you guys have Twitter, definitely go on there, get at us, let us know. Um, just be warned, I'm the one who runs that. So if you come <laughs> at me sideways with some comments that Josh is responding all nicely to, uh -huh. you're not going to get the same reaction from me. But I do love the fans, love hearing from you guys. So yeah, definitely get at us. 
Yeah, if you've been on the show before and you have a Twitter handle, please uh, get at us for sure. But um, all right, that's a wrap. Uh, Latina, thanks again. Thank yep. you. All right, everyone, stay safe, stay kind, stay proud and powerful, and we'll see everyone soon. Peace. Peace.